morning and welcome. I'm Dale Jarvis. I am the Intangible Cultural Heritage Development Officer for Heritage NL. And joining me today is Mike Hickey. Mike, say hello. Hey, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for having me. This is cool. Yeah, so um, you and I have known each other for a while now through your film work and sort of our mutual interest in spooky stuff and whatnot. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it, it, maybe just introduce yourself and give a little bit of background about kind of the work that you do. Um, oh, if I could. Uh, I, yeah, I, I work in film and I've been doing that for a long time now. Uh, actually, the first film I made was called Our House and I made it about almost 10 years ago now, and wow. Dale played himself in it. It was, because uh, uh, I, I love storytelling, and I love horror, and, and ghost stories, and all that kind of thing, and so the first film I made involved The Haunted Hike, and so it was really cool to have uh, Dale be involved that way, and um, and thank you again for it, and uh, yeah, so since then, I've been uh, working on a bunch of different stuff. I, I've, I've worked for other people's projects. I've been doing a lot of my own thing. I have a series called Fright Hype that I've been doing with Crypt TV for five years now. Um, five years? Yeah, five years, and, and we're actually in the middle of uh, transitioning from Fright Hype into a podcast, and so I've been dealing with like a lot of emails and trying to coordinate stuff to, to line up some interviews and get that going. Um, and I do another podcast called Third Man In. That's a hockey thing. And uh, during all this, I was in the process of like a bunch of stuff not being that creative. Like I, like I was working on this other podcast and it just kind of was, it, it was just that trying to get the traction with it and try and get it started. But I saw other people doing a lot of creative outlets during this lockdown and I was kind of getting jealous of it. And so I decided um, to start a micro podcast when the doubling of the bubble happened. Uh, it happened right around the same time they announced uh, Rode, who I have a bunch of uh, equipment from. They're doing a, a, a contest where you can win a bunch of podcasting gear, and I was, but it has to be two minute episodes. And I was just like, well, what would I do if I was going to do a two minute episode? And it was like, I'm going to talk to people about how they're doubling their bubble because it was literally like the same day that it happened. So I, would, I decided to start. And so this week I've been doing that. <laughs> So maybe just to provide a bit of context for people who might be watching this either from some place that isn't Newfoundland and Labrador or someone watching this in the future, uh, explain the whole doubling your bubble uh, situation. Well, we're really lucky here because we're so isolated and we've had a relatively low number of cases. I know it spiked uh, early on, but it's been pretty calm for the last while. And so what they're allowing us to do now is double our social bubbles. So your social bubble was essentially your household. If it was your family, if it was like you and a roommate, whatever it was, that was your social bubble. And you're supposed to stick within in, in that small group um, was what you were supposed to just maintain through social distancing. But because things have gotten fairly good here in terms of um, in terms of COVID and, and the spread and the number of cases, um, we're allowed to double that bubble now. And they told us we're allowed to pick one other kind of social bubble that you can you know merge with and hang out with, and um, you know whether that's a lot you know. And I'm getting a bunch of different stories about it. Um, you know, you're hearing about people who are catching up with friends you're hearing about people who have kids and and they're letting their grandparents come around and stuff and and um so people are doing it in a bunch of different ways but it's a it's one it's just like an, a small expansion of your social group for the foreseeable so now where are where are you locked down who's in your primary bubble uh, it's just me and my wife and my dog, who actually, it's her, uh, my dog's 10th birthday today. Um, <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. Yeah, we just gave her some treats. She's very excited about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just me and my wife. Um, and that's and it's been just us for, uh, for the last two months. Um, and then starting last week, we have uh, another uh, friend who are a couple our age um, who live a few streets over also don't have kids. And, and so we expanded our bubble with them. And, uh, so they came over last week and we got, we got, we got pretty drunk. <laughs> um, and it was really fun. And we actually, we had a barbecue with them last night and they're coming over tonight for the dog's birthday. So, right. I mean, it's, it, you know, it, it, it's really fun and we're trying to take advantage of the fact that we're allowed to be around people now. Yeah. 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 That's excellent. Um, I, 
how how has the how has the lockdown kind of affected you professionally in the work that you that you do? Um, it worked out to to a degree for me. Um, I'm caught up in a couple different projects right now that like I was supposed to do a lot of travel for work. I was supposed to have been in South Carolina uh, last month for a, a shoot. I was supposed to be working on a couple pitcher starts through the uh, through NIFCO's program. I was supposed to be working with the Grind Mind guys on their pitcher start and uh, working with Devin Shears on his. And, and so there was a couple people that had shoots that were canceled. And it was, and it's, so it's a lot of the get out of my basement home office and work with people, a lot of that stuff's been canceled, obviously, or postponed at least. And so there's been a lot of shoots and, and a lot of things that way that that have gotten nixed. But I'm also working on a, a book for Engine that's due out this fall mm -hmm. called Terror Nova that uh, I think you're especially going to get a kick out of. Uh, and it's an anthology with a bunch of different authors, and I'm writing kind of the wrapper around all of it. Uh, but between that and the new podcast that I'm working on with Crypt, I been kind of focusing on that stuff and so it's also given me more time to just be at home and work on that as opposed to being dragged off to a shoot here or a shoot there or here a shoot there a shoot um you know like a lot of that stuff i'm able to focus more on the work that i i do at home and, and the writing and development stuff so the the double your bubble podcast that's that's through anchor right that's the, the um, platform yeah, you're using anchor. yeah so it's just it's uh anchor is just the hosting platform yep. for it and it's the one that's like required for the um for the contest that i'm using it to uh and and, and it's one of those things where it's just kind of started as like maybe i'll do it for the contest but now it's like a thing and i can't not do it <laughs> regardless of what happens with the contest it goes but um it's through anchor and uh you can get it there, but it's also popping up on other spots. Like it's on Spotify now. It's on Google Podcasts. It should be on Apple Podcasts like any minute now. It's just, it always takes a few days for those things to get approved. And, you know, that's sure. So, so who have you, who have you been having a chat with so far about doubling their bubble? Um, well, I, I spoke to my stepsister was the first person I talked to, <laughs> yeah. uh, just cause we were chatting. I was like, Hey, do you got a minute to do this? And then, uh, when my buddy Joel came over to the house, uh, I recorded one episode in person, which was fun. Um, we've had, uh, Candace Walsh, who a lot of people know as a, a travel writer and blogger. Yeah. Uh, Candace was on the other day, John Rich, who, uh, is a local real estate agent. A lot of people know as a Twitter personality and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the growler super fan and uh, just a great guy. He was on yesterday. Today I have uh, my friend Kim Follett, who is an actress that I, I've known and worked with for a long time, but she's, um, she's a mom now. She's, a, she's married with a, a kid and they had a really interesting story about how they picked who it was going to be. Uh, and that episode probably, uh, that episode was scheduled to go up like just as we were starting this call. So that one's just online. I'm going to start doing a push when we're done. Um, tomorrow, I've got a bonus episode where I have a friend of mine, a guy I grew up with and went to high school with who now lives in Whitehorse. And uh, he wrote me the other day and was just like, I know you're not really like, you know, it's kind of out of the scope of what you're doing, but I'd love to talk to you about it. And so we have like a four and a half minute episode bonus episode so i mean it's a little bit more of an investment for people <laughs> but uh it's because it, he explains kind of what the situation is like in whitehorse and then kind of explains how he's doubled his bubble through that so uh it took a little bit more time so i figured i'd put it up over the weekend and i've got some people lined up for next week and uh it's it's fun it's like one of those things that's taken off a lot uh so are you and, sorry are you are you still are you looking for more people how long how long do you want to continue with this as long as I can. Um, I mean, I'll go with it, I guess, as long as doubling your bubble is a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's weird because it's a very kind of specific thing right now um, and very much tied into um, what, what's happening right at this moment. And when we move to other phases and other stages and it's not just a bubble that's being, you know, if it's not just being double, if it's triple your bubble or whatever it, it becomes, you know, um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how all that plays out, but you know, I'm not sure right now what all that's going to be. So, um, for the time being, I'm just going to kind of keep going. And if anybody, I, I, I tell, tell people at the end of every, every episode, I can't even speak and I'm podcasting. Um, I tell people at the end of every episode that if you know you have stories, reach out to me on Twitter. Um, and, you know, I, I love hearing from people that way and people writing me and saying, hey, like, I'd love to be on the show. I'd love to tell you my story, whatever. It's great. Um, so, yeah, 
like always looking for fresh stories and I'll keep it going kind of as long as I can. And, and even after we were done doubling bubbles, if people still have stories about it, it'd be cool. I, so, I want to do follow-ups too. It's like, so how did it go? Did you regret who you yeah. did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we've been, we've been working on this oral history project around uh, COVID-19. And that's one thing that people have said, you know, it would be kind of interesting to uh, do a series of interviews now and then come back at a certain point. And that might be like, you know, 10 years in the future and yeah. then kind of look back and say, okay, well, what, you know, is your perception the same? You know, what do you, what do you feel now about what you felt then? And, and uh, because, yeah, we're, we're in the middle of it. We don't know where it's going to go and how, what the long-term impacts are going to be. Exactly. And I mean, I even look at it from the point of view of as simple as what I'm doing with this double your bubble thing. So like, you know, you have people who are like, we've doubled our bubble with this friend. And it's just, kind of, and this is the one friend that we're saying we want to spend, like the only person we care about spending time with for the next at least month or two. And I'd love to check back in with them down the road and just be like, so do you still talk to those people? Or just <laughs> yeah. <like? laughs> yeah, there've been all kinds of jokes. There have been many, many jokes since this uh, lockdown started that the the projected divorce rate is going to skyrocket when we come out of this. But, you know, honestly, I, I've been talking to people who um, have been pretty comfortable in their little bubbles, you know, and uh, yeah, it's interesting to see what people's different experiences. Is, is there a, is there a common theme that has emerged in these little interviews that you've been doing? Um, not yet. Um, I mean, it's a relatively small sample size right now, you know, like I've got six episodes recorded. Um, and of those I've gotten, um, it's been a person who has uh, picked, they're at a cabin and it's the people across the street from them that have kids the same age. So they say, okay, we'll go with you guys because it's, it's relatively easy. I had, um, you know, my buddy was one of them who we just, when we started hearing talk of it, we just like texted each other and said dibs. Um, <laughs> just because we knew we wanted to hang out. Because uh, we were like Zoom calling all the time. We were doing this and you know, uh, playing games and drinking and like having like Zoom parties. Uh, there was uh, Candace who got, who went with one of her best friends who she hadn't seen, who's a friend of hers that lives alone and was just like, I'm getting this person in. Uh, there was uh, John who hasn't, doesn't have anybody. John hasn't bubbled um, he, just because of, you know, he, he, he just, one of those, one of those things where it's like water, water everywhere. Uh, it's just, he, he knows so many people, but they have, different situations and it, it just hasn't worked out and today is somebody who literally I'll spoiler alert but the episode will be released by the time anybody sees this she literally picked put the three grandparents names in a hat and pick and pick names out of a hat because they couldn't pick and they just yeah. said okay we're gonna put the three grandparents in and pull out a name and that's the way they did it and so uh you know and then Chris tomorrow is uh, he, it's friends of his that are kind of my situation. It's just like people we hang out with all the time. And of all my friends, they're the people that we eat with the most. So it seemed like, you know, I like to yeah. have, eat their food. So, <laughs> so your stomach I mean, is talking. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's a relatively small sample size. And as of right now, it is also people I know. And the, like the closer the connection to me, it's just kind of, you know, I've gotten three answers that are relatively similar to mine. So it'd be, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting as it kind of spreads out and I, and I get people who I don't necessarily know firsthand who are secondary connections to me that like, as it spreads outside, the interview base spreads outside my kind of social circle. I think it's going to be interesting to see the different perspectives and stuff. That's what I'm really, that's the stage. I think like week three of this is when the interviews are going to get really interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the, uh, I like the picking the, the names out of a hat. Cause that, that's smart because then you don't piss anyone off, you know? <laughs> and, it was, and it was great. What it didn't, the way it ended up happening, she was telling me that like her parents are divorced. So that's two households and her husband's parents are together. And they just moved to St. John's. Like they just moved to town. And so that was who ended up getting picked was her in-laws. But it was great because like her parents have been around for the first, like the kid's only a year old and, the, and her parents have been around the whole time. These people just moved to town and they pulled their name out. And now it's kind of great that they get to spend the time with the kid because they haven't been around for as much as the, of the first year. So, you know, she was, she said she cried. She was so happy. Like, you know, she was like, you know, she would have been happy with anybody, but she was like really excited for them. Um, which is really sweet because, you know, it's just, you're seeing that kind of stuff. You get those, the videos of people like reuniting and, and all that kind of thing. And 
my wife almost took one of like me and my buddy Joel last week, just like when we got together with a case of beer, like hugging each other and, <laughs> and uh, it was almost as sweet as like the children hugging their grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a great montage on I don't know one of the one of the local media outlets of all the the children and grandparents. Yeah, you need you need one of all the the buys in the shed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, uh, Outhouse did a really great did a really great video this week that was very similar, and someone sent it to us. It was just like this is you and Joel, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm curious just to, to look at this in a, in a slightly different way. Yeah. You know, as a as a filmmaker and as a storyteller, you know, mm -hmm. you you have um, you often have options about uh, you know how complicated you want to make a story if you're going to do a long form or short form. So what's it, what's it like working in this little tiny two minute window? It's really cool because. Um, as you can tell from this and also having known me for 10 years, I'm someone who could talk a fair bit um, and really limiting it down and trying to find that kernel of the conversation of how long, like however long the conversation may be. If it's, if we literally just talk for two minutes, if we talk for five minutes or 10 minutes and finding the two minute nugget, that is the most important. Um, I try to keep it to three questions. Um, I try to just simply ask people, who'd you double with? Why did you pick them? And how'd it go over with everybody else? Those, you know, there might be other conversational questions that pop up, but that's kind of the primary three. Um, but really going back and being forced to whittle that down to two minutes and even less, it's really 90 seconds because I, I try to in every episode, I do a little bit of an intro that just kind of explains the situation so that if people, it's like 30 seconds of, um, of intro. So there's really 90 seconds of us having that conversation because with what I try to do is, is I ask people before the actual interview part, like how old they are, what their marital status is, if they have kids and what their employment status is right now. Because if you're 33 and married with a kid and working from home, it's going to be a different bubble situation than if you're uh, 40 with no kids and single and still working, you know, like who, like your, your choices are going to vary based on those. So I try to get that information just out of the way and I do it really quick as part of the intro so that we, like everybody listening has the information they need. Um, but yeah, so really I'm taking 90 seconds of, mm -hmm. uh, and trying to boil down relatively big concept of, yeah. of who people are picking and, and it but I actually find it really great because it is kind of focusing me and I'm take, like really focusing on what's important here like what's the important information and the thesis of this conversation I find sometimes those um, short form stories are are harder in some ways because you really have to be mm -hmm. succinct you know the as someone someone out there is going to fact check this and tell me if I'm wrong but there was this uh, there's a famous quote which I think was Mark Twain Mm -hmm. who said, uh, he wrote a letter to someone and he said, I'm, I'm sorry for writing you such a long letter. I didn't have time to write you a short one. Yeah. Because the short one is what takes the, because you got to really think about it and you can't be stream of consciousness. You have to kind of plan it out, right? You know, if, if you're doing a, a longer, uh, you know, a longer interview or something, you can kind of ramble. But mm -hmm. if you've only got 90 seconds and you need to be really careful about what it is you're, you're putting up there. Yeah, well, with Third Man In, um, 3MI, like we that one's not really edited. We start talking and we have interviews and stuff and it's broken up into kind of segments, but those episodes usually run, have run anywhere from 45 minutes to two and a half hours. And I don't edit them. I don't cut out the ums and ahs and all the things. Um, it's just like intro, put the, the vocal tracks down, let them play out it like end music. And that's kind of it. Um, but with this, like I'm taking more time to edit these than I am to record them. And that's a little bit of a new thing for me with regards to podcasting. And it's great because it's, you know, making me a bit better. It's kind of making sure that those muscles don't atrophy and I'm able to really work that stuff out. But it's also making me better at, again, finding what's important, but also just finding ways to cut it up and make sure I'm taking out this part, like what you can lose and what you can leave in. And um, it's just, yeah, I, I, it, it's harder, but I, I think the product is, is kind of better at the end of it because you mm -hmm. are really getting down to what, the nuts and bolts of it. I, I remember years ago uh, doing a workshop with someone about 
uh, kind of writing statements about historical buildings, right? And this idea of, you know, you, you go and you see the, 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 the heritage plaque that's on the side of a building. Mm -hmm. um, he said, you know, because you have so few words to use, he said, it should always answer the question, so what? <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, you know, you know, this building was built in 1920 and it was designed by such and such an architect. Well, like, so what? What's what's the point? You know, what's what is. So you have to really kind of think we have complex information and how do we how do we put those in as few words as possible? You know, I people tend to tune out after a certain point, you know, so we want to be able to have these nice little concise stories that mean something to someone, you know, finding the core meaning of these stories, I think is really interesting. Yeah, and with with other stuff I've done, especially like the longer form stuff, it is really easy for people to just be like, yeah, it was like 45 minutes. Like or it, was, <laughs> it was two hours. I couldn't invent. But with this, it's like, it's two minutes. Like, it's a great little story. Today is with Kim and talking about drawing grandparents' names out of a hat is adorable. Mm. And it's this great little thing. And it's and it's two minutes and so it's really easy for people to consume and it's kind of fun you know and and like you said it's the so what you know i try to get I, like in that intro i'm giving the information about the architect and how when the building was built and all those things and then i'm giving the person 90 seconds to say so what you know and it's uh it's really fun that way. And, I, and I'm really enjoying talking to people about it, especially because I'm catching up with people like Chris, the guy in the Yukon, like I haven't actually talked to that guy. He moved away years ago. So I probably haven't talked to him in almost 10 years, you know, yeah. like, and it just, he wrote me the other day. He's like, I love what you're doing. I'd love to chat to you about it. And it was great. Yeah. I, a friend of mine uh, who is in uh, British Columbia, who I, who I haven't talked to in a while, you know, we're friends on Facebook, but we don't connect all that often. Um, she's gotten into home fermentation uh, over the past little bit, which I've also started to kind of experiment with. So we've been like, we had a little chat about home fermentation. And so, uh, you know, kombucha? people, uh, yeah, well, yeah, she's making kombucha and stuff like that. And I'm making kind of uh, ginger bug that's a whole topic for another uh, another day but yeah it's interesting you know like people are doing stuff and reaching out and you know finding ways to kind of maintain community in the middle yeah. of all of this which I think is fascinating yeah and the community thing is, is is important right like we're all isolated like we're all everybody in the world is going through this right now mm. and there has really never been even with the, the world wars and these kind of massive events there's never really been quite the same sort of degree of of global experience mm -hmm. um and it's really kind of interesting like you're talking to people like i'm talking to people in la and toronto and australia and and all over the world and i've got friends in in the caribbean that i'm talking to and everybody is experiencing the same thing. Everybody's in lockdown. They're with a small number of people that they're allowed to see, you know, people are putting in grocery orders online and like, you know, mm. dealing with the six foot um, social distancing and all these sorts of things. And it is bonkers that everybody is going through this at the same time because yeah, I don't think there's ever been quite the same degree of a shared global experience and we're all going through it and we don't know when it's going to be over and it's it's just really surreal but it's cool to talk to people and find even beyond that the other common threads you know so like you said like the fermentation or podcasts or you know yeah. talking yeah. about just even talking to people about how they're making this difficult choice about doubling your bubble like as 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 cheerful as the expression sounds it can be stressful for people there's been a couple friends that I've mentioned it to and they're just like I don't even want to talk about it you know, they're living with roommates and them and their roommate are trying to coordinate which one of them gets to see their girlfriend or, uh, you know, somebody has, doesn't have any family and their partner has family in town, but they don't want to double their bubble with their partner's family when there's friends to drink with. And like, you know, like all these different kinds of things. And, and there are people who are having really hard times making this decision. And there's been several people who just won't talk to me about it. They're like, I, you know, I'd love to do it, but I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. 
What, one of the things that we're doing uh, as part of this uh, oral history project that we're working on, we're encouraging students who are at home um, to do some recording of their own and, and interview their parents or interview whoever's in their, in their bubbles. Um, you know, as someone who has a, a background in filmmaking and podcasting, is there, a, is there any advice, technical advice or practical advice that you'd give to a young person who just wanted to start off doing some home recording? Um, you, you know, just do it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know, your, your, your phone, you know, chances are you have a smartphone and that smartphone has voice memo or video and do it, use it and make stuff. And, you know, there's this great James Cameron quote about how, if you want to be a director, just make something and call yourself the director. You know, it doesn't matter who's in it doesn't matter if it's your sister or if it's your friend, doesn't matter if there's no budget, but do it and put your name on it as the director. And now you're the director. And from here on out, all you're doing is negotiating budgets and fees. Like that's it. And it's a great quote. Um, but it's sort of the same thing with this. It's like, yeah, if you want to like anchor where I'm hosting this, it's free anchor.fm. You can put up whatever you want on it. It's a free podcasting hosting service. And you can record something with your phone and it could be a voice memo between you and your mom as you're just having a conversation about whatever and then put it online and it's a podcast and it's out there and now you're creating something. And the more you do that and the more feedback you get from people, the more you're going to try to hone what you're doing and mm -hmm. it's going to make you better. And so, yeah, just do it. Just get out there and, and, and make stuff, you know, use this as it's easy enough in all this to be like, I don't want to do anything. I want to, I'm just stressed and I'm anxious and I'm all the things. But if you feel up to it and you want to take advantage of this time to make the thing that you've often wanted to do, do it. What was your first, do you, did you have a first kind of film project? Like when you were, what was your first, your, the first thing you made? What was, what was that in terms of a film project? Um, I had done like a bunch of, like in high school and stuff, there was a couple things in, in classes and, and, and things where I remember I, a, a couple friends of mine got me to shoot their like lit class. They had to, like a creative writing thing where they had to do a, a, a movie project and they had me shoot it for them. So, cause for some reason they thought that I would be good at that, even though I had never done it before. And so there was a, a few things like that, but um, I kind of got out of it for a long time and not long before we did our film. Um, I had gotten a, a camcorder and just started making a couple weird little shorts. Like I had, I made one where it was just me and my buddy walked through the woods one night and I put in a bunch of sound effects to make it seem like he was being attacked by a werewolf or something. And um, that was kind of one of the first things. And that was like 10 years ago. And then I got involved with NIFCO, the filmmakers co-op. And if anybody is interested in anything like this, reach out to NIFCO um, and did the first time filmmaker for like intro to filmmaking. And then the first time filmmaking course. And as the first time filmmaking project, I made our house, the film that you were in and have just kind of gone on from there. So yeah, yeah we, were we were talking about community and that, that seems like a really supportive community. The NIFCO Correct. kind it's of family true. of people seems really uh, kind of incredible. It's a great resource that we have here in the province. It is. And it's hidden. Like a lot of people don't even know it exists. I was in town for a couple of years before I even knew about it. And even longer before I knew where it was or what it is, because they are a little bit hidden in plain sight. You've seen the buildings, they're on posters, but no one knows it's the filmmaking co-op. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, it's a, fantastic place with a really great sense of community and once you're in and you go to the AGM and you hang out with people and you do all that you get involved and you get involved in projects and it's a really uh accepting community and it's really great um and there's more and more people online that are you know creating now and podcasting and making their own like YouTube videos or or Facebook videos or whatever it might be and there's so many people creating especially right now it's just really easy to kind of get into a community that way. Mm -hmm. Well, as we, I think this is probably a good, uh, a good way to kind of wrap things up. So just before we finish, um, I, do you want to just kind of give a plug for how people can get in touch with you, where they can see you and listen to your projects? Um, yeah, uh, usually the, I usually have been directing people to Twitter with this one. It's uh, Twitter. Uh, my username is at Hickey comma Mike. Um, H-I-C-K-E-Y-C-O-M-M-A-M-I-K-E. And just send me a message that way. Um, I'm the same on 
you can find me using the same username on Facebook and, and Instagram, and you can send me a message if you want. But the podcast is uh, anchor.fm slash hickey comma Mike. And uh, that's the easiest way to find it right now. And yeah, it's coming up on all the different platforms and stuff, but anything that any, like, you know, anything is going to get shared to the various other places. So if you check Instagram, there's a post there where you can find the podcast through that and other things and your bookshelf just started to move. On <laughs> that's a, that's a cat, not a ghost. Yeah. You're safe. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's a little disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you can find and like just check any uh, any different platform with Hickey comma Mike, and usually you can find my stuff through that. Awesome! Thanks for this, Mike. Thank you. This was awesome.